A couple days ago, I did a software update on my Model S. Went up a couple versions, and immediately after, the fan for my heat and air conditioning stopped blowing. The car still produced heat. Um, air conditioning would still work. Just the fan itself would not blow. Um, well, of course, I attributed it to the software update, which was partially correct. Now, my Model S is a early 2016, and I'm one of those people that always likes airflow in the vehicle. So I always have the air running, heat, AC, or vent, bringing in some nice, fresh air. Well, car went in for service. It was going in anyways for uh, the CCS upgrade and a hood latch uh, adjustment recall. So they took a look at the fan for me. Now, while it is true that um, the firmware update did trigger the fan to not turn anymore, um, it was for good reason. And that would be a few different wear items. The fan actually is worn out, even though it was, or it did appear to work just fine. So we're gonna take the cover off and take a look at the mechanics of the fan. I'm gonna flip it over first to show you. Um, this is like what you'd call a squirrel cage blower. And it turns counterclockwise from the outside and the air comes out this way. At least that's what it looks like based on the markings. Um, there is a vent right here. And there are six clips holding it together. I pre-popped them to save some time because it took a few minutes. And um, this is a is made by Bosch in, uh, was it, I think I saw Korea, yep, made in Korea. <clears throat> Counterclockwise, there's the, the actual fan number there. And I will put the Tesla part number in the description box below. Um, surprisingly, this was overall a very low cost fix. Now your 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 cost might vary or will vary probably. Um, there was a diagnostics fee which was kind of unavoidable. Um, they still had to take stuff apart and figure out what the problem was. Uh, the fan itself was a hundred bucks, and uh, so don't waste your time going and getting a used one off of eBay. Just go straight to a service center if you want to replace your own. 100 bucks, or just have them do it. Uh, in installation, they only charged me about $35, $40 for install plus tax. I would say that is very fair, especially for how much you use. So, uh, seven years and, and just under 150,000 miles of use. So, let's pull the cover off here before I ramble on too much. Uh, so we have vent. You can see a lot of crusties up here. I wiped a bunch of it off because the first time I opened it, just powder fell everywhere. And I'll explain why in a second. As we're looking in here, there is a bushing here. There's also a bushing on the other end of the shaft. Um, I couldn't get this off without causing a lot of damage because once it goes through the plastic, well, it is held on by a circlip, um, has little tabs that kind of lock it in as well. I might heat it up with a heat gun and try and get it off, but um, take a look. So we got, we got a bushing here. It does not appear to be a, a bearing or a roller bearing, um, just a bushing. And there are two brushes. So we have two main failure points of the of the, of the HVAC blower, and that is the bushing, the bushings, because there's, there's two of them, one on each side, and the brushes. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver here, part of one. We're going to pop the brushes out. So failure point number one, and I played around with this a little bit. It does still work if I connect it up to a 12 volt battery. Uh, now this, you'll see this spring is, is kind of out of shape a bit, and that is because I stretched it purposely. 
you can see the brush, one of the brush, I'm not going to take both of them out, but um, you can see the brush right there, what's left of it. It's got about roughly maybe 15% of, of itself left. I'm moving my table here, sorry. Um, now, even though there's about 15 or 20% of its brush life left, and it's still functional, the problem is, as the brush wears, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And that also means the spring that's pushing it to keep contact with the commutator slash rotor um, is getting longer. Well, as that spring gets pushes out and gets longer, it doesn't have as much pushing force. So once it gets to a certain point, it's making contact, just not very strong or very good contact. Um, then you get a, well, with a poor contact with electrical, you also, then you start getting higher resistance, um, might, ha might have a higher amperage. So I stretched those two springs. That alone made a huge difference when I ran this off of a, just a 12, 12 volt battery. Um, so by stre stretching both springs, and they're both worn about the same, a little harder to get back on though, it provides better pressure to be able to keep the, br the carbon brushes pushed against that copper rotor and commutator. So failure point number one, it's about a dollar part. Problem is they are connected via copper braided wire, which is welded, crimped, then welded to these, to two of these posts. See, is it which ones are they? This post and this post. So while you could replace the brushes, if you could find one, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. If you can find one, um, I, it does not appear to be available from Bosch. I spent way too many hours last night trying to find one. Um, and considering the kind of a hack job, you could probably solder it on um, without too much trouble. But considering the kind of hack job that it would be to replace the brushes uh, and the, the cost of the motor and especially how long it lasts, uh, just replace the motor. Number two failure point is the bushing. Roller bearings can last a very long time, especially if they're greased and sealed roller bearings. Bushings will really wear out much quicker. And this appears to be a brass bushing. And uh, let's just do a little example here. I'm going to spin this. See how quick... There we go. I have to hit, hold it at an angle where it is not going to rub on the plastic. See how quick that stops spinning after I spin it by hand. doesn't matter what direction I go. That is because the bushings are worn. Now I could put a few drops of oil on there and I probably will just to play around with it. I'm going to, I'm going to use this for maybe some stupid project or something. Uh, maybe an exhaust fan for, uh, in my garage or something for when I'm, doing some soldering, you know, just to get the, suck the smoke away, or I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. So I can always use little motors for projects. Um, I can put some little three-in-one oil on there, or some silicon, and this will spin much better. Now, a new one, if I were to do that, would probably spin for about 30 seconds or more before slowly coming to a stop. This one comes to a stop very quickly. So that's failure point number two. So I'm going to try some oil there. And I'll, since this is never going back in a car again, I'll pull this off, pull the circlip off, and um, I'll use a whole bunch of screwdrivers or something to, or maybe I can use a bearing puller, gently pull that off and get it past and grease the, or oil the other side. So there you have it. This is the Model S and Model X pre-plaid, um, so I guess what would that be, pre-2020 
uh, refresh motor, blower motor. Uh, looking on the Tesla parts, oh look at that, see that's all the carbon dust, a whole bunch of it on my, on my desk here, my workplace, uh, tear down desk. Um, the, what was I saying, uh, uh, pre-2020 Model S and X both use the same blower, so they both use this. Um, based on the Tesla's parts catalog, uh, the Model 3 looks like it originally used a brush motor. I don't know if it's the same or not, but now the 3 and the Y appear to currently use brushless. And given the refreshed uh, plaid, so 2020 and newer S and X, uh, which weren't listed on the parts catalog for some reason, uh, use the 3 and the Y style HVAC now. Um, I'm sure they, prob they probably switched to a brushless motor. Um, I guess over time I didn't really notice how much this actually wore. And now that I have a replacement in there, I can noticeably tell that it is moving much more air. And one thing that you can tell if it's getting close to failure it might be hard to hear as that spins. Now, you, you, I've heard it in some cars, like my 2013 before I traded it in. Um, you'll hear a noise as when the fan's at a lower speed. That is indicative. I just won't get that word out today. That indicates the bushing is starting to fail. I'm moving that a little bit. I can see a little bit of wiggle and wobble room uh, at the shaft on that bushing. So that's that indicates that you have a failure coming up. Feel free to keep using it, of course. Um, no reason not to. Uh, but uh, yeah, there you go. So. Getting back to why the car stopped the fan from spinning uh, would be after that firmware update, the tolerances were likely changed in the software, um, thus meaning that while it would have been within tolerance and allowed to operate before on the older firmware, on the newer firmware, it said, eh, we're going to stop, stop the fan from spinning a little bit sooner here, and uh, yeah, you need to go get a replacement. There you go. So again, parts numbers, I'll have parts numbers for all the different fans in the description box below. If you have questions, comments, if you like the video, please like and subscribe and um, give me a thumbs up. That always helps. Don't forget to hit that bell notification. I'll, I'll also put the uh, oh, LHD. This is for left-hand drive Teslas. I guess things are a little different on the right-hand drive ones. But given that this is North America, I don't really have any reason to access or dig through. Of course, an equivalent for left-hand drive countries. It's a Bosch F00S382. There's a 3, 3B2. So F00S3B2441. 12-volt counterclockwise made in Korea. Bye-bye.